Hey Kevin, thank you so much for joining us. I'm so excited to talk about all things MotoGP. So how have you been covering MotoGP this season for BT Sport? Well, it's quite a continuation of last season, really. We're uh, still based at the BT Tower for our presentation, uh, which is not just the, the studio floor, but it's also the commentary boxes spread across uh, the two floors at the top of the tower there. And then also with the uh, collaboration from the teams and Dorna and uh, and everybody at the, the track, we're, we've been able to do all of our interviews down the line. So we've still managed to keep a connection with the track, which is good. Uh, then in the last four races, we've been able to expand the production a little bit, which is uh, which is excellent. We've been able to send a small crew to site. So we've had a reporter and, uh, and an analyst uh, and a very small production team. Uh, which has really enhanced what we're doing again. So it just feels like we're taking small steps back towards how we want the production to look again. Yeah, great. And what is the workflow like? Because I hear it's uh, something of a spider web. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> at the moment, we're operating across uh, four sites. So that's the gallery in Stratford, the studio at the Tower, uh, the track, uh, VT, which has been at North One's offices in Farringdon, uh, and we've got the edits at home as well. So it's been quite a quite quite a lively operation. I mean, it's not as much of a spider's web as it was last year, because as we were becoming remote last year, it was, uh, uh, we, we for instance, VT this year, we, we've got everybody in one area, whereas last year everybody was at home. So we were lining it up across 10, 11 sites last year. So... Having gone from for an operation which used to run out of two or three porter cabins at the track uh, where everybody was together to then find ourselves in a situation where everybody is scattered all over the place. It's been it's been. Yes, yeah, so I think a spider's web is a very good way of describing it. But you mentioned last year it was such a, a feat, a, a genius feat to get it on air, but it was. You know, it's really quite seat of the pants stuff. So how has that changed this year? How has it sort of settled down? Uh, well, it's set, settled down a lot, I think, mainly through experience. Uh, I think we, uh, when when the first lockdown came, we just had to do what we had to do to stay on the air. And, and we were really proud of that, you know, we, the, the, with in collaboration with uh, the technical partners here, Timeline, and with uh, BT Sport and the engineering department here, we... We, we, we managed to get ourselves back on the air. And then as we moved along, we, we then moved where we had our presentation, where it started off at Triumph headquarters in Hinckley. Then it went to the BT Tower. We started off with a gallery in Ealing. Then we ended up in a gallery in Stratford. Uh, we've moved people all over the place and we've just managed to keep going. And, and I think as as we've made each step, we've managed to... Uh, to, to just improve it a little bit, tweak it a little bit. If we've discovered things aren't quite as we'd like them, we try and change them. So yeah, we've um, we, we've just we've just got the experience of this last year, and and we're just trying to fettle and improve as we go along. Yeah, amazing stuff. What challenges though are are still present? Well, I think it's a similar uh, challenges to to what everybody else is facing. Really, the uncertainty over travel, the uncertainty over our own calendar there's there's been a new update come out this week which um which uh, the american grand prix in austin has come back onto the calendar now if you told me that a few weeks ago i would have thought absolutely no chance but then i think with the vaccination rates improving over there and um i noticed they had six six figure crowd at the indy 500 uh, a, a few weeks ago i the, the world seems to change really, really quickly, and we just have to be able to react. It's so difficult, um, mm. and I think they're the, they're the main challenges. Really, is trying to keep up or, or trying to stay ahead of of what potential changes might come and how we're going to react to it. And staying even more ahead, so you've got plans to go fully remote by twenty twenty two. How did those plans come about? Well, fortunately, those plans were already in place uh, before before the pandemic um, and, and BT was already uh, well advanced in, in, in trying to move many of its operations remote, whether it's football or, or us, obviously with us, it's, it's a, it's a big win for them because of the, um, uh, because of the travel, because we, we, you know, as it stands, a, a large team uh, r running around the world on, on aeroplanes isn't, isn't, isn't the right thing when it comes to sustainability. So, 
um yeah we, we we fortunately were able to use the learning that bt had already done before the pandemic and before uh, any of the lockdowns had happened to accelerate that and get ourselves back on the air and and that then happened across all the sports as well um i think it's a, it's a particular challenge for us with with uh, us having relied on travel for so long to to then uh, change it but you know we we are just having to react we're all having to react at the moment aren't we and uh, and that that's where that, that has come from and that's what we're planning to do in the very near future and how will that Kevin change the dynamic I mean what and and who essentially is going to be based in the remote facility and versus who's going to be on site well we still want the the presentation team to be on site because that they that they're, they're the they're involved in bringing us the event and, and bring us the emotion of the event and trying to take the the atmosphere and, and to, to take to take the people who can't go to the event to it you know they need to bring it home to them so uh, they, they obviously need to be there and with the presentation team there needs to be a certain amount of support crew there has to be the, the camera people the sound people the engineers the people that make it work but the remote gallery in the UK will be the gallery staff. So it would be producer, director, PA, VT, graphics, edit. So, so a, a, a decent portion of the team can stay in the UK and use the technology to, to bring the feeds um, involving the presenters back to, back to here and then um, producing it from here. And where will that remote facility, where will that be? Well, I think this is the, the uh, part of the exciting thing for us is that we've um, we've got a new facility which we are in the process of developing in Birmingham. Um, our CEO at North One, Neil Duncanson, is on the board of um, Create Central, which is uh, an organisation that's been formed to try and encourage uh, the media back to the West Midlands. I think since Pebble Mill stopped. 20 odd years ago it, it, it's been a bit quiet around there but in that time um north one has had a base there and produced a lot of programming there and now there's a, a new facility the new creative hub which we're going to be very much a part of and with bt sport wanting to um spread out into the regions too we saw it as a perfect opportunity to go and do something exciting there. And obviously Birmingham is fantastic. It's the country's second city and it's so diverse and so full of talent. And, and I think that's something that that we wanted to promote and BT Sport want to promote as well. So it, it will give us a, a chance to start afresh with a, with a, a brand new facility and a, an exciting way forward, really. And how will you keep that sort of unity amongst the crew and with the talent as well when you now have some people going on site and some people based in Birmingham well I mean that's a challenge but but we we've we've had an, a year and a half of doing it this way now so it, it's taught us certain things I mean we do have to work harder to stay connected I mean it used to be you could just wander around and chat to people and we do have to make sure that continues the, the good thing is we've all worked together for quite a long time we, we keep a very settled crew so we do all know each other very well and whether it's maintaining WhatsApp groups that are entirely designed for, to, to keep people entertained and to uh, enjoy each other's company, or whether it's just making sure we ring people and, uh, and, and, and speak to them all the time. Obviously, as the series editor, I need to speak to people for, for work reasons most of the time. Um, but yeah, that, that is something that we need to make sure that we get right, because team unity is so much a part of what we do uh, and, and always has been um and we can't let that slip so that is something that's a really important part of what we're going to have to do going forward for sure and back-to-back -back races at the moment kevin i'm sure it's a uh, long days and nights for you all but it was it was such a brilliant weekend of racing in saxon ring with mark merkins back on the top step how with that kind of frequency of 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 racing how do you just keep as you said ahead of all the likely and un well i say likely but it's still so much uncertainty around all the travel and the restrictions yeah I, it's it it can be a slog i mean you know it's it's a lot of races in a short period of time and um we, we're still likely to get 19 races this season which means that that when we come back after the uh summer break we're expecting another um 10 or 11 races I mean, clearly, the, Australia is still on the calendar at the moment, and I, I, I think it's probably fanciful to think that that might happen. But then, who knows? The pandemic changes so quickly, and you just, you, you just, you just don't know. So, um, 
and and with this large summer break which originally did have finland uh, in but again good news for finland things were going well there so then they decided to not allow sporting events because they didn't want to encourage anything new into the country so and i think these are new challenges that we're having to face all of the time so that's now been postponed so i think we are expecting a lot of races in a short period of time at the moment the calendar's got four races in october which which clearly is a is, is, a, is a busy busy month um but we, we just have to try and stay ahead of it and and unfortunately for those that do the budgeting and the um and the organization you, you just have to have plan a plan b plan c uh, and 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 hope one of them happens and it might be the way things are at the moment that it's actually plan d that happens so it, it's just it's just impossible to try and um second guess but we we just have to use our experience use the way we know that it all works and hopefully st uh, stay on top of it so kevin out of this time that has um been crazy for so many reasons what are you most proud of having achieved well first of all i was proud that we got back on the air last march when when things were were really difficult when the pandemic struck and nobody knew what was what was around the corner and we got back on the air and we stayed on the air and we've been on the air ever since and as the calendar has ebbed and flowed and changed and things have gone from being looking a bit more promising to not so promising and then a bit more promising again as is the same for for everyone but we've just been able to roll with it and i think that's been i think that's been really important and it's been wonderful to see how people have have been able to react and how the people on the team have all to the different circumstances I'm, i mean i think some people went mad in their spare rooms just uh, uh working out of working out of their homes but 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 they did it and then when we've been able to bring people back into galleries and offices they've done that too and all along as a production which has always relied as most motorsports do on on being able to travel the world which we're we haven't been able to do. Um, I, I think we've we've succeeded in in bringing MotoGP to people's homes. But I, th I think the series itself is is fantastic. The racing's brilliant. Uh, the stories. I mean, it's a proper soap opera. You know, the stories are the stories are wonderful. And I think um, we are really, really, really um, enjoying um, having been able to to bring MotoGP to people despite the limitations, which I think, I think, really could have thrown us, but but they didn't. Yeah, and most GP fans, me included, obviously, are, are so grateful for that. It's um, it's been brilliant to watch sport has come into its own during this time as well, for the reasons that you said. Um, so Assen next, then Kev, looking forward to that one. Very much. I mean, uh, as you know, Abby, it's a brilliant circuit. Wonderful, wonderful place for racing. Uh, a few fans back in as well, which is which, which is great because, as we know, Assen is one of the races that's uh, most supported. It won't be the quite the crowd that we normally expect there, but it's uh, it's a it's a fantastic place, wonderful circuit, great to watch racing. Um, I think the story with with Mark Marquez having come back at the last race, and uh, I think if there was ever a, a, a racetrack where he was gonna put in a decent performance, it was the Saxon Ring, and um he he lived up to more than what was expected of him i don't think he was expecting it himself and uh the fact he's able to pull out a victory given his physical condition is is extraordinary so yeah uh, i think the, the story the story is wonderful um it means that the points are being spread across as well which makes, keeps the championship lively um and it's all, all very exciting for us to cover and exciting for the people at home as well i hope yeah, I can um, say that I was sat in this very room watching uh, that race and hearing Mark Marquez on the interview with the BT Sport cameras and just blubbed, <laughs> just blubbed. So you're giving me all that emotion and joy. So Kevin, to you and all, all the team, thank you. And thank you for joining us today.